Well, hi there, this is Chandra Easton from StarAstrologyHealing.com speaking to you today about um, uh, the tremendous changes that we're going through on Earth uh, known as the Great Change and um, I'm coming from an astrological perspective, I'm an esoteric astrologer this is the third in the series of talks um, from darkness to light um, and the reason I'm doing these is to help you um, broaden your view and get a bigger picture and a bigger understanding of what on earth is going on on earth, how it relates to you, what you can do to um, navigate uh, this period that we're living through uh, uh, to stay centred and balanced and harmonious. Because it's such a large subject, the great change, and there are so many avenues that I could um, choose to explore it, but I'm focusing really upon the planet Uranus and its movement uh, through Taurus and how, by virtue of the opposition, it reflects upon and throws its light on the sign of Scorpio. And uh, how the sign of Scorpio, and I've talked about this in... in um, uh, the first and second talks in this series, part one and part two. So you can, I advise you to go there and start at the beginning. Yes, and what happens, just to briefly recap, um, this is a tremendous um, spiritual test and a spiritual acceleration and a healing and a cleansing and a purging, one might say, of the deepest, darkest, um, worst aspects of human nature that we all have stored within ourselves. The reason we have these stored within ourselves is because we have free will. And when we use our free will um, for selfish purposes and means, it, it has some ramifications and creates some negativity and density. And the negativity and density that is part of the human condition, the human nature, is stored primarily in the sign of Scorpio. Now, this does not mean that I'm talking just to people who have the sun in Scorpio, although you may have the sun in Scorpio, or you may have some personal planets, or the midheaven, or the ascended in Scorpio. But effectively, um, I'm speaking to people who are approaching, aspiring to, or approaching, or have their foot on the spiritual path. Because people who, um, who, are, who come into that category are approaching what we refer to as the fixed cross. And the fixed cross are the four signs of the zodiac, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo and Aquarius. And these signs of the zodiac are the ones that are um, where the testing, if you like, associated with what it takes to live a balanced, harmonious, spiritually anchored life. I'm not talking about religious here, but a, an anchored life where you are the best person that you can be, where you treat other people well, where you care for the earth, and where you are working to cleanse and purify aspects of your personal nature that um, you know need some work. Okay, in the second um, talk in the series, I spoke about the nine heads of the Hydra. And this is the shadow of humanity that's divided into nine sections uh, according to the degrees, the zodiacal degrees between naught and 30 degrees Scorpio. So what I'll be doing in this talk now, this third in the series, is I'll be going into these nine um, facets and I, uh, from the point of view of the timing. In, in part two, I went into the nine heads of the Hydra in terms of what they mean and what they are. And now this next layer is the timing for the activation and the cleansing and the healing and the purification of these nine heads of the Hydra. I'm talking about the period from March 2019 through until April 2026. So you can see that um, we're already into this, and it's a seven year period. So here we are, I'm doing this now, it's October, two and a half years into this cycle. So a lot, of, a lot of what I'm going to say in the next half an hour or so will be a recap of that last two and a half years and hopefully you can use that recap to reflect on what's happened on earth in the last two and a half years, what's happened in your life, how it relates to you. I should say that if you don't um, have your birth chart, 
and you don't know whether you have any planets in the fixed signs of the zodiac by natal chart or progress chart well, this would be a very very useful thing for you to um, to access your natal chart I'm an esoteric astrologer you can always contact me or any other reputable astrologer to um, get an understanding of, of how this specifically relates to you okay so let's start talking about the first head of the Hydra remembering there are nine heads nine facets of the unredeemed aspects of human nature in the sign of Scorpio and I'm talking here about the degrees 0 to 3.3 Scorpio and this is um, where the issue is associated with sexuality and or survival and of course they're connected sexuality is the means of the survival of the species but not the only means yes of sure we need procreation but we also need um, an earth to live upon we need we've got to consider here the survival of um, uh, you as an individual the survival of humanity the survival of the animals the survival of nature yeah so um in March 2019 Saturn entered into nought degrees Taurus and began to throw its um, potent electrical um, light onto this issue of sexuality and survival and the period from March through to May 2019 was the first trigger think about this as an incubation period what happens with the first um, uh, transit and this is um, Saturn opposing nought degrees Scorpio up to 3.3 is that issues begin to they're magnetized and they're drawn forth and they come to light a bit like um, uh, you know when in the younger in my younger days if you had a boil my mother would get something called magnoplasm and put it on it and that would draw out um, the the um, the bacteria draw out the pus draw out the inflammation eventually the boil would burst and so this is what Uranus is doing as it focuses upon the different issues is it is it magnetizes and draws out the density now the second transit the second time that um, uh, Uranus opposed these degrees of Scorpio was between November 2019 and February 2020 okay now most people would be aware that November 2019 was when um, the world first heard about the coronavirus um, in China uh, well in retrospect I think we heard about it in fact I don't think the world heard about it until was it December but the problem was was brewing in November and December 2019 and dare I say it was also brewing in some capacity between March and May 2019 and then in that second um, activation period November 2019 through to February 2020 it's just what's that November December January February four months the world galvanized into action okay we think we've got a, a potential pandemic here it potentially could impact the survival of the species what are we going to do about it so the governments around the world responded in all kinds of different ways some slow some fast to protect and defend uh, humanity against this invisible pandemic uh, interestingly enough which arose out of the energy of Neptune but that's another story so what happened during that period is that our individual um, issues associated with survival began to be activated yeah. now how we survive in in wealthy first world countries is quite different to survival in third world countries and I know for instance um, that um, you know some people in Africa and Egypt uh, you know they just simply there all their work stopped um, there was very limited amount of money uh, there was no money no financial handouts from the government there were basic food staples so survival became a very big issue um, that that began to arise from February 2020 and similarly in the first world countries different governments responded in different ways so the Australian government responded by um, locking down international travel um, and of course you can look at this survival issue in terms of 
um, what are the species, the extinction of species that were threatened? Is the earth going to survive with the um, increase of uh, fossil fuels and greenhouse gases? Uh, what's the capacity of humanity to continue to survive on this earth if we keep living the same materialistic world way. I know one of the things that happened as a result of pretty well the almost overnight shutdown of international travel was that the earth began to breathe more deeply. Yeah. International travel and tourism was kind of, I don't know, it didn't stop immediately in February 2020 but it certainly uh, fell off a cliff and as a result of that, the survival of the earth and the atmosphere got a bit of a reprieve. Yeah? I'm not sure if there was really such a reprieve for people living in impoverished conditions in third world countries. Okay, so I just invite you to reflect what were your personal issues between March and May 2019 in November 2019 and February 2020 around survival and or sexuality. Were you incubating something? Were you living beyond your means? Um, how were you impacted by this um, pandemic that was threatening to overrun the world? How did it trigger you? Okay, we're looking back there. And then what happened, um, and, and you see what happened is after May 2019, then Uranus moved on into the next degree, this is between 3.3 .3 and 6.6 .6 Scorpio, the degree known as physical comfort, which I also refer to as complacency or a rut. And, and Uranus began to activate and bring to the surface between May and November, um, you know, what was our response? Were we complacent? Were we in a rut? Were we just looking after our own physical comfort? Were we concerned about the fact that um, I was comfortable but maybe my neighbour wasn't? Yeah. So this period between May and November 2019 and the second time the Uranus activated this degree was between February and April 2020. Okay, so um, many people may well be aware of how the pandemic impacted them personally in that second period, February to April 2020. Here in Australia, for instance, the government um, was locking down borders and then began to um, uh, prop up the economy by giving government bailouts. Uh, you know, so you could say that Australia was really isolated and protected on some level, being geographically so far away. Um, and not being a third world country, a lot of people survived through that period, February to April, but a lot of other people were out of their comfort zone, lost their jobs. So some people were complacently in their ruts and very comfortable, and others had fallen through the cracks. So of course what we're meant to be doing with Uranus activating the degree of physical comfort is respecting um, the earth, uh, sharing whatever it is we have to share and um, you know being resourceful, using the resources wisely, not wasting, not being complacent, not staying in a rut. We have since learned, and of course there were many issues that happened here in Australia for instance, um, all the overseas backpackers were either thrown out of the country or left stranded, they fell between the, uh, they fell through the cracks. The overseas backpackers being the cheap labour for a lot of the farming communities put the farmers into crisis. Um, on the other hand, we have since in hindsight discovered that many businesses um, uh, received money that they weren't entitled to and exploited the government's bailouts. Um, some of the people who'd been marginalised and unemployed and living, having fallen through the cracks for years, received some money and were able for the first time to have some kind of quality. So there was, I guess what I'm talking about here is the excesses of um, comfort you know, those who have who are comf living comfortable lives and those who are homeless. Yeah, and that was that that issue was raised and uh, brought into sharp relief for everyone to see. And this was happening while Uranus was opposing the degree degrees of physical comfort. So I invite you to reflect upon 
how comfortable you were during that period. That's the, what did I say? I said February to April 2020. And earlier than that, uh, May to November 2019. Yeah. What was your comfort level? What resources did you have? Um, how willing were you to change and adjust and get out of complacency or a rut? And then that was the second of the, the heads of the Hydra. And then Uranus uh, began to shine its electric fire onto the degree of money. And this is the 6.6 .6 to the 9.9 .9 degrees of Scorpio. And did this twice, between April and June 2020. Yeah, that's um, a few months. And then the second time it did it was between October and April, October 2020 and April 2021. Okay, so the degree of money was activated and we know that money means power and we know that um, those who have it um, have power and those who don't have it are often disempowered and are and, uh, at the, the bottom of the heap, so to speak. The issue around money is really to do with what we value, what, quality, what, what type and quality of life do we want, yeah? what are the resources that we have, how well can we barter and we trade. So between April and um, June 2020, um, I think the government had promised the money um, when it was, we were going through the degree of physical comfort, but it began ha handing it out, I think. Is that right? April to June, I think that's when the first bailout happened. By the time we got through October 2020 to April 2021, they started withdrawing it and reining it back in. So initially there was a generosity with money in the first hit and then there was a withdrawal. And so of course this sort of giving and then withdrawing of support and um, resources uh, has created ups and downs and um, you know again some people fell through the cat cracks, some people lived well, some people were living the high life. Really what I think we were being asked to do is to live simply in, a, in that so that we may all simply live. If a whole lot of people live to excess, that means a whole lot of other people live um, at the, bar the margins. Yeah? So this issue of money and wealth, and I really, I think you could say there are so many ways you could look at this. There's the cryptocurrency that has really taken off in recent um, years. No doubt there would be many, many stories all over the world as to who's, who have resources and who don't, who's bartering, who's trading, who's fallen through the crack, what happened with the stock market. A lot of those issues would have been um, under the focus um, as Uranus supposed the degree of money. So that's the sex, physical, comfort and money are the first to can and the impact was extremely physical. And when I say sex, I also mean survival. So some people survived. Some people lost their lives. Some people lost their livelihoods. Some people became homeless during the physical comfort. Other, other nations, other people seemed to be buffered and sheltered, as Australia was, as we were going through physical comfort, as we were going through the issues of money. Um, some governments shared, some didn't. Okay, and then Uranus began activating um, the second decan. This is the fourth head of the Hydra. And this, as you would remember, hopefully, is fear. And the degree for fear is between 10 and 13.3 degrees Scorpio. And I'm still talking retrospectively. We're still in 2020 and 2021. Um, and uh, the the... Instead of there just being two activation periods for fear, there are three. The first fear activation period was July to September 2020. And of course we know that fear is an enormous contagion. I guess I would say it's as if not more contagious than any pandemic. And so we've had a fear contagion that, that, that raised up like a cloud threatening to envelop humanity between July and September 2020. The second activation was April to June 2021. That's just a few months ago. And the third fear activation 
is October 2021, that's where we are right now, and April 2022. So you see that um, the activation of the fear, the deepest fears that I have or you have or governments have or individuals have, has been stirred up between July 2020 through to April 2022. It's an almost a two-year cloud of fear. And from my perspective, it's also fears and lies. A lot of propaganda, a lot of media distortion, a lot of censoring of the truth, a lot of um, invasion into people's hearts and minds. This is fear has been pushed and used as a political weapon. As we know, it's been used as a political weapon down through the ages to control the masses. It's the big stick. Yes, uh, so it's a two-year uh, weapon of um, fear, lies. And, and for many people, the challenge is to uncover where's the truth in all of this. You know, uh, things are not black and white. There's not a right and a wrong, a good and a bad, a, a one one size fits all in the midst of this world that we're all living through. So each individual uh, is, um, it's recommended that we search our hearts, our inner reality to understand and access what is the deepest truth within ourselves and not simply buy in to any line from anyone else uh, because we're afraid. If we allow fear to be the motivator in our lives, then we will make choices that will be very harmful to us, no doubt harmful to our families, harmful to um, our nations. Uh, when fear is the motivator, uh, for our choice, then only harm can come of it. And because fears and lies go together, well, it's very dangerous territory. And uh, propaganda, you know, we've all been able to look back um, 50 years at Second World War and see clearly the um, mesmerising um, power of uh, fear and nationalism as it was, as it was drawn together there for devastating impact and a propaganda machine like none other but from my perspective here in the next century with technology being what it is in the world wide web well um, the propaganda of the, um, the second world war is minuscule compared to what we have these days yes yeah, so and we know that the the way of um, clearing and moving through fear is to search deep within ourselves and to ask for a spiritual connection to the truth, to find inner courage, to find a spiritual anchor, and, and to love in the face of fear. Yes, a very big challenge. And one of the reasons this is so difficult is that fear is one of the, the heads of the hydra that the ego will defend with its dying breath. Because as long as we are motivated by fear, then the ego's in control. Okay, the fifth head of the hydra, hatred, between 13.3 and 16.6 .6 degrees Scorpio. Hatred or great harm. Now this can be harm to yourself, harm to others, harm, harm at the hands of others, harm that happens to you because others are ignorant or fearful. Um, it can be. It can be the a side effect of hatred which can be jealousy and revenge and punishment the most difficult of all the heads of the Hydra of Scorpio activated three times the first activation was July to October 2021 that's where we are now July to October 2021 so no doubt you're all aware of the hatred that has been unleashed around the planet, through the media, hopefully not within yourself, maybe it's around you, maybe you've, you've um, felt it within you. Um, for example, I was listening to the radio a week or so ago and I heard a, a woman ringing up in a late night talk back radio program and she wanted to talk about 
how frayed she was for a family member of hers who um, was unable to have some life-saving surgery. And then, and then out of her mouth came hatred. Uh, so the converse, conversation had started with care and concern for a loved one, and then it had gone into fear that he wouldn't be able to get treatment for this um, life-threatening operation. She's living in Sydney that's in the middle of a lockdown. Uh, and then uh, it was clear to me that she wanted to blame someone and then she started mouthing hatred to all the people who were not vaccinated, who were, um, for some or other, in her mind, they were the reason why her loved one was um, potentially going to die. And she said she wished all those people would be dead. Well, the, um, the gentleman who was um, the radio announcer got her off air pretty quickly but she she cast this fear and hatred out across um, the airwaves and uh, that's just one tiny tiny example and no doubt you've got lots of examples of where fear or hatred and here we're talking about hatred is unleashed you know we've been we've been greatly concerned about an invisible virus but I ask you to consider the, the viral contaminant of hatred and I ask you to reflect upon where you might feel it in yourself or your life and what you can do and hatred is the greatest weapon fear and hatred together are the two weapons that the ego uses to keep its own survival and the reason our egos cling so tightly to hatred and fear is because they they're afraid that they will dissolve just to explain, the light of Uranus sheds powerful light. The light of your soul would, if you would invite it, shed powerful light into your life. Your ego, and my ego, is afraid of this light, afraid for its very life. And the weapon that it uses to defend itself against the light of your soul is hatred and fear. And the timing for the unleashing of hatred is first activation, July to October 2021. Second activation, April to June 2022. That's next year. Third activation, December 22 to March 2023. So in a nutshell, we have the unleashing of individual, group, national global hatred between July 2021 and March 2023. That's almost two years, isn't it? And we are, what are we, six months? Not quite, six months into this war where the ego, um, the, the um, collective ego of humanity it's, it believes it's fighting for its life defending itself against the light of soul and spirit so this is a battle to the death light will always triumph just because the the deep deep unredeemed aspects of our personality our ego need cleansing doesn't mean to say that we won't uh, that the ego will die it will it will it will be transformed and different. You will still be you, but in a, a better version of yourself, in a clearer, more balanced, harmonious, loving version of yourself. There is no need to be afraid that you will lose your identity if you give up hatred. If we hang on to hatred and use it as a weapon against ourselves or against others, then we are we are moving in the opposite direction to spirit. We, we're going to lock ourselves deeper and deeper and deeper down into matter. We've had enough of the lockdowns. The freedom from lockdowns is the surrender of fear and hatred. And it is difficult to do that if we don't understand that we are not the fear and hatred. That, that we are souls having a physical experience. We are human. We have our, we have our fears, our anxieties, our insecurities, our, um, 
all that, that, that defines us as human, but essentially that's just the container. We are a soul having a human experience. And the challenge for humanity between July 2021 and March 2023 is to voluntarily surrender hatred. Refuse to partake in it in any way, shape or form. Do not harm yourself. Do not harm others. Recognise that the battle for the control of... Um, for the control of um, the future of humanity's experience and life and very survival on this earth is, is happening right now. The tools that we can use, that we can draw upon are unconditional love, compassion, forgiveness and an acknowledgement and a recognition that we are spirit, a spiritual in integrity. So important in order to neutralize this fifth head of the hydra great harm and hatred the sixth head of the hydra um, and here did i say when we were working with clearing the fourth the fifth and the sixth heads of the hydra we're working to cleanse and redeem and lift and purify the astral body now this is ambition and the degree 16.6 .6 to 19.9 scorpio during this period, and, and this one's all ahead of us, this is the next couple of years. Um, during this period, that I'll give you the dates in a minute, um, we need to ask ourselves, does the means justify the end? Will I look away and walk past certain bad behaviour because I'm afraid? Because I, I haven't been able to find the strength of spiritual connection within my heart? Am I using means that, that are harmful to the end? Yeah? We're talking here about principles to live one's life by. So it's important to ask oneself, what, are, what is the goals and the purpose for my life? And what is the best way forward to manifest and to, to achieve that goal and purpose? If we compromise our principles and look away, and, and, and effectively sanction a bad behaviour because we're afraid of something, then it will come back to haunt us. We know this has happened with, um, well, you know, the, um, the global issue that's been going from, I'm just trying to think of the name of it, for a few years with the women speaking out, the Me Too movement, yeah? Where, where for, for centuries or decades um, certain bad behaviour has been tolerated. You know, people have looked away. Oh, well, you know, that's, right. that's how life is. That's the way it's been. You know, we've, we've had very public examples of this in Australia in the government with um, the Attorney General being accused of um, uh, rape and, and all the machinations that followed that accusation and how, um, you know, there's a sense of privilege and he had ambition and um, he had a purpose and a goal and his means justify the end. So, so I'll just use that as an example just, just to invite you to have a look at your own life and to ask yourself, what are the principles, um, the ambition that I wish to live my life by? Yeah? Are these principles based on the heart? Are they wholesome? Can I hold my head up high and say, yes, these are the principles that, are, that I will work with? Or um, will, I, will I bow and surrender and cave to either my own personal ambition or the ambition of, of someone else or the ambition of a government? We have to be very, very... Um, careful of, of anyone who says well these means justify the end we have to do this because we must get to that so I ask you to look around your life and, and to see where that that um, distorted ambition is and where are the and what are the principles that you want to live your life by and make choices based on that in the following dates 
the first time that the ambition um, of the sign of Scorpio is activated is between June and November 2022. That's next year. The second hit is March to May 2023. And the third hit is December 2023 to March 2024. So again, we have almost, but not quite, almost two years of an unleashing of the ego's ambition all around the planet. And what we pray is that, is that methodologies where the means justifies the end does not become the norm. And therefore, what we pray is that, is that the spiritual integrity and the principles upon which one chooses to live one's life are picked up and held aloft as a light by those who are on the spiritual path. Did I tell you that it's 16.6 .6 to 19.9? And in terms of how these... And, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to stop there. There are three more of the heads and they go through the years 2023 to 2026, and I'm not going to do that now because it's too far ahead. Um, but I hope that, that by outlining this, um, these teachings that, that you begin to reflect on this cleansing. It's, it's very methodical. It's, it's, it, there's an esoteric plan to it. Uh, those who are on the or approaching the fixed cross, the path of spiritual discipleship, uh, have, we have a duty of care to lift our game so that we are not carrying any of these, um, that we are carrying less, of course we're carrying some, we're human, that we are carrying less of this density and less of this darkness. We want to be part of the solutions, not part of the problem. We don't want to be part of the, the contaminant not the viral contaminant, not the emotional cont contaminant, and certainly not the, the pandemics of fear and hatred or wrong ambition. Okay, the specifics of how it relates to you, it's very much in your natal chart. I would recommend <coughs> excuse me, that you speak to an esoteric astrologer because an esoteric astrologer can help lift you to the light of your soul. Uh, and somewhere down the track, probably not for quite a while, I will continue on with the fourth in this uh, series of talks. Um, there's been a lot of other teachings on my website. Um, uh, if you go onto my website, starastrologyhealing.com, and you type in Earth's Great Change, you'll see that there are lots of different teachings there on what's been happening. Just remember that the purpose of all of this um, purification and this um, disruption is is the um, um, the victory of light on our earth and the raising of consciousness and as many souls on earth who would choose it. This has been Chandra Easton. That's all. Bye for now.